Good evening. Uh, welcome to New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church uh, Bible study. It's been a while and I know that uh, we have been uh, missing uh, our Bible study, but I thank God for his grace and mercy that he has allowed me to uh, be back in the position that I uh, he has called me to be. And certainly we're grateful tonight. And uh, tonight uh, we're going to uh, walk the footsteps of something that's very important. And that is we want to talk about prayer tonight. Uh, I'm going to get into a series uh, starting next week that the Lord said the same about the power of prayer. But tonight I just wanted to kind of uh, just get us uh, up to speed about prayer and what prayer is and, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and being persistent in prayer. Amen. And so uh, uh, as you are coming on, uh, I realize we are running uh, just a couple of minutes behind, but uh, that's how things are when you haven't done something in a long time. But we are grateful that God uh, is still in control. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we will get into our lessons. Father, we thank you. We thank you for just being so kind, giving us this day that you have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you for your grace and mercy. God, we thank you for uh, the membership that you have allowed us to uh, be a part of. God, we ask that you continue to bless not only the saints of God all over God, but just bless your people, bless this country. And God, we just ask tonight, Lord, that you allow your spirit to lead us and guide us in all your truth. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. Amen. Tonight we want to talk about uh, prayer and uh, we're going to uh, look at uh, uh, Luke chapter 18, starting at verse number one. And we'll probably look at one through eight. Uh, that's going to be our reading from t for tonight. Uh, of course, you need your Bible because you know that we uh, don't just look at one particular scripture or verse. We look at several. So you need your word with you, whether you got your iPad, your iPhone, your Android phone, or you got your actual Bible. You need that and so that we can make sure that we are together. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, one of the things that I've discovered is in this time that we are in right now, this uh, this pandemic or pandemonium or what we're going through, one of the things that the Lord had really pressed upon my heart was the fact that prayer is something that has been missing uh, not only in the church but among the saints of God. Uh, we talk about prayer all the time, but are we truly spending time with God? Are we truly uh, spending time on our knees? Are we truly spending time in conversation with God? Because I've come to the realization that if we're ever going to cause an impact or a change in what we are dealing with, with this uh, coronavirus, this COVID-19, as it is called, uh, it's going to be through prayer. God is moved by the prayers of the righteous. And so I believe that in this, this season that we're in, uh, this, this new season that we're in, uh, because we realize that we have come from a place where we once were being quarantined and everybody was on the inside uh, in the house. Everybody was praying. Everybody was, uh, you know, focusing on God. He was the focus uh, but now that things have opened up, and because things have opened up, people have, are now, you know, not as committed to God as they once were. And so uh, tonight, we just want to look at prayer. And, 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 if, I, and if I could just start by first uh, telling you what prayer is, and, and this is uh, my own thing that the Spirit gave to me, and, and, and you can write this down if, if you don't mind. But true prayer is neither uh, a mere mental exercise nor a vocal performance. Amen, somebody. Uh, it is far deeper than that. It is a, get this, a spiritual transaction 
with the creator of heaven and earth. It is a, a spiritual transaction, which means that whenever there's a, a transaction, that means that there's something that trans uh, that's being transmitted or, or, or given between two people. Amen. Uh, that's what a transaction is. Uh, the Lord God Almighty, watch this. He invites us to pray to him because prayer is the most powerful way to experience God. Why do I say that? Because prayer helps us to uh, get to know who God is. The best way to get to know a person is by talking to them. You can never date someone. You can never be in a relation with someone. You can never even call somebody a friend if you don't spend any time with them. It it takes communication. It takes, And through communication, you begin to learn one another. And that's what prayer is for us. It's our communicative tool to help us to get to know who God is. It's not always about just telling God about your problems because the Bible lets us know that he knows what we are in need of even before we ask. So God knows everything about you. Whether you ask for it or not, he already has said that uh, my God will, shall supply all of my needs. In other words, he know what I, what I stand in need of. And sometimes he'll even bless me with my wants, but, but the uh, prayer is our communicative tool uh, with God. Amen. And so because it's our communicative tool, Tool that we use to get to know God. Uh, I want to I want to share something with you. Uh, the power of, of prayer is the power that comes to us when we realize this is through prayer. Prayer empowers you. The power of prayer is the, is the power that comes to us when we realize that God can be. Watch this. Our point of reference in the midst of all confusion of our daily lives. When you realize who God is, when you come to realize who he is through prayer, through spending time with him, then now you don't have to lose your mind in the midst of your storms. You can have peace in spite of what you're going through. Once you come to realize who he is, I just read it to you, that he is our point of reference in the midst of all confusion. He's our point of reference. In other words, he's who we go to. Because prayer helps us not only to understand the will of God, but prayer helps us to act out the will of God. And the safest place to be in the midst of storm, in the midst of confusion, is in the, is in the will of God. Uh, let's go back a couple of Sundays ago when I was talking about Goshen and, and how Goshen was a place where God protected his people. He had a place where even when his anger was all around, uh, his anger never touched Goshen. Goshen was a place where he provided for them. He kept them. Uh, amen. And so uh, we, when we get in the will of God, we are actually in that place of Goshen where God protects us because Goshen means to draw near. And that's simply what prayer is. Prayer is our way of drawing near to God. Amen, somebody. Uh, don't tell me that uh, you pray if, if, if I can't see no results, if I can't see no fruits, because there's no way you can draw to God, draw near to God. And the Bible said he'll draw nigh unto you. There ought to be some kind of fruit because there's a, some kind of chain that takes place. Because I just told you earlier, there's a, a transaction that takes place. When I talk to God, there's a transaction. I give him my burdens. Guess what? He sends me his blessing uh, of joy, of peace, of hope. There's a transaction that takes place. So when I draw near to him, something has to take place between he and I that causes me to change from the person that I once were into the person that he wants me to be. Let's go to our, uh, our scripture for tonight. I'm reading from the New English Translation, Luke chapter 18, verse number one. And it says, then Jesus told them a parable to show them Watch this, that they should always, talking to the disciples, but he's talking to us today as well, that they should always pray and not lose heart. The King James says that men ought to always pray and faint not. In other words, we ought to be in constant communication with God. There's nothing that you should do that you don't talk to God first. 
You shouldn't take a job. You shouldn't start a business. You shouldn't start a relationship. You shouldn't buy a house. You shouldn't do nothing, have surgery, whatever it is. You ought to talk to God first about whatever and find out what he has to say about the situation. Because sometimes God may say, not now. He may not tell you no, but he may just say, not now. Because he's working something out that's going to be better for you. Because a lot of times, we want something that's shiny. And I've come to realize that even as a kid, um, sometimes the most shiny of toys don't last. But God will give you something that will last beyond the years that he has placed on your life. And so he tells us that men ought to always pray and faint not. We ought to always be in communication with him. Why does he say that? Because he's saying the more you learn, the more you talk to me, the more you learn about me, the more you find confidence in me, the more you start to trust me, the more you find hope in me, the more your faith starts to grow, the more you realize that, watch this here, I can do all things through Christ, which is strengthening me. The more I talk to God, the more he pours in me what I need that I can maybe be able to stand still and see himself. I ain't got to throw in the towel. I ain't got to lose my mind. I ain't got to go out and shoot up uh, uh, neighborhoods or do nothing crazy or foolish. But I found out that through communication, God will restore in me what I need. So he said, men ought to always pray and not faint. Uh, that word faint literally means to be wearied out. So many times we are in our life as Christians on this journey, we're just worn out. We're tired. I found even myself saying, you know, I'm tired. I'm just wore out. And, and that's because a lot of times we're wearing ourselves out doing church work and not necessarily the work of the church. We're wearing ourselves out doing things that are important to us, but are they important to God? That's why prayer is important because you need to find out what God wants you to do, not what you want to do. When God blesses us with gifts, our gifts are, be, are to be used for his glory, but you need to find out where to use your glory, your gifts, so God can get glory. I, I don't need to be somebody who uh, 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 has a great voice, but I'm standing at the door uh, being an usher. I ought to be what God wants me to be in the choir, uh, singing praises unto Zion, uh, because I, I realized today that uh, the, the, the songwriter was right when he said, there is a sound that, that is pleasing to his ear, the sounds of praises lifted into the atmosphere. Uh, you got to be in the place. And how do I know the place that I should be? How do I know my purpose? How do I know the plan that God has for me? I need to talk to God in order to find out. And we're in a season where we need to be talking to God because we're in a place where we have opened up our churches, opened up the doors of the church building, should I say, because we are the church. But if the church, us, is not, play, is not praying, then opening up the building does no good. And for those that uh, don't have the confidence or, or just uh, you have underlying conditions and you're thinking about your health and, and, and by all means, stay where you are, stay protected, but you still ought to be praying where you are. Prayer is something that should not stop just because of my location. Prayer should still be the focal point. I should be praying, not only covering my family, but I should be praying for the leadership uh, that I'm under. I should be praying for the direction and the guidance for the leaders of the church. So that because as the leader goes and follows Christ, uh, I'm going to follow him. So you've got to be in prayer for the body of Christ as well. Now is the, is the perfect time to be praying for our country, for our leadership. Because I just believe that when we start praying uh, as a body of Christ, that's going to be uh, the effective, uh, uh, the affection, the effectiveness that's needed to cause the change of what's going on. And so, faint means to be wearied out. It means to be weak. It means to be exhausted. Get this. It means to be spiritless. So, in other words, he's saying we ought to always pray and not be spiritless. 
<laughs> In other words, if I'm ever going to keep my spirits up, if I'm ever going to be striving and if I'm ever going to be uh, have purpose and if, if I'm ever going to walk in my purpose, am I ever going to be able to walk with my head up? I've got to stay in contact with God because I've come to understand that, watch this, write this down. Prayer changes your spiritual battery. That's what happens when you go into your prayer closet, when you are worn out, when you are weary, when you are uh, torn, when you are sad, when you just feel like giving up. When you go into your prayer closet, when you talk to God, when you spend time with God in communication, there's a transaction that takes place. And so prayer uh, charges your spiritual battery because sometimes on this journey, you can get worn down. So it tells us that we ought to be always in prayer. Amen. And faint not. It charges your prayer, charges your spiritual battery. Watch this. When you're in fellowship with the Lord. In other words, whenever I'm talking with God, whenever I'm spending time with God, he charges my battery because, because it brings you. Watch this. This is how your battery gets charged. Because when you're in fellowship with God, it brings you into the holy of holies to receive grace. So when I'm talking to God and I'm spending time in prayer, it brings me into that holy of holiness. And so that's where God restores me. That's where he recharges me. Amen, somebody. Let's look at something uh, because we're looking at prayer and we're looking at the persistence of prayer because we should be persistent. That's why God is saying to us tonight, uh, that men ought to always pray. Men ought to always pray. Men ought to always pray. God wants us to always be in communication with him. We use always be in prayer. Amen. And so he says uh, in Ephesians, let's go there. I want to look at something. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 12. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse number 12. And I'm reading from the New English Translation. Uh, and it says, In whom we have boldness and confidence, and confident access to God because of Christ's faithfulness. Let me read it from the King James uh, Translation uh, for your hearing. Because I just got through saying uh, prayer brings us into that holiness of holiness, uh, and, and we find grace. Uh, Hebrews 4 and 16 tell us that we come boldly to the throne of, of grace, and come boldly to the throne that we find grace in time, in our times of need. And so we talk to God, uh, not only just because we need something, but, uh, but, we, but he does want us to have the confidence to come to him in our times of need. And so Ephesians 3 and 12 says, and the King James, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. In other words, we have this boldness and we have access to come and talk to God because of what Christ has done for us. It's through Jesus Christ that we ought to have this boldness, that we ought to use. It's one thing to have an access card to be able to get into a building and never use it. Everything you need is in that building. Everything. Everything you need. Everything you need is in the building, and yet we never take our access card to go in and get what we need. It's already been laid out for us. It's a part of his plan. It's a part of what he has for us. And yet, here we are. We have the access, but we never go in. That's how it is for a Christian to be prayerless, to never talk to God. You have access to something that has been made accessible to you, and yet you never reap the benefits of it. Amen, somebody. So he's telling us to not be, don't, don't ever stop praying. Don't ever uh, give out, but can be persistent. And now is the time that we should be persistent. Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah. 
Y'all knew I was going there. Isaiah chapter 40. Y'all already knew where I was going. Isaiah chapter 40. And I pray this is blessing somebody uh, tonight. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, and I'm reading from the New English Translation. Let's start at verse 29. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 29. You ought to know it by heart. We quote it all the time. And, and the New English Translation says this. He said, he gives strength to those who are tired. So in other words, when I go to him in prayer, he restores my strength. Isaiah 40 and 29. And it says, we had a little technical difficulty, uh, <clears throat> but we back. Amen. Uh, praise God. We, we survived uh, the hurricane <laughs> that just blew through my office. We, we, we back. Uh, <clears throat> so let me let me hurry along. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 said he gives strength to those who are tired to the ones who like power. He he gives renewed energy. So this is the reason why I, we go to God in prayer, because on this journey with all that's going on, you need to be renewed. You need to be renewed in your strength. He just told you to, that men ought to always pray, pray and not faint. So in other words, we ought to not give up. Then in verse 30 he says, even youth get tired and weary. Even strong men clumsily stumble. In other words, it does not matter how much power you have. It does not matter how strong you uh, say you are because there are some people who are strong. And I'm not talking about just in faith. But strong for as mentally, physically, emotionally, but even those stumble. But he says in verse 31, and this is where you need to hang your head tonight. He said, but those who wait for the Lord's help find renewed strength. That word wait means that not only am I waiting on God, but it means that I'm still working. I'm still communicating. I'm still believing God for what I've asked him for. I'm not going to give up because God has not blessed me with it right away. And that's the problem that I think a lot of people have in the body of Christ is that we give up on God because it does not happen in the time that we give God to happen. But how many know that you can't rush God, you can't hurry God, you just got to wait. And so waiting is being patient with God. That's why there's scripture that tells us that we that uh, the psalmist said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined, in other words, while I was waiting on him because of my faith in believing that he was the only source I need. He was not only my resource, but he was my source. God did something. He he, he inclined his ears to me, which means he, he moved on my situation. So he said, but those who wait for the Lord's help find renewed strength. They will rise up if they had Eagle's wings. So in other words, God knows how to give us what we need to endure what we're going through. They will rise up as if they had eagle's wings. They will run without growing weary. They will walk without getting tired. Whenever you spend time with God, I promise you, you will never run out of what you need. Sometimes you will have to endure patience. Sometimes you may have to endure some suffering. And long suffering. But I promise you this. The more you go to God. The more he gives you to be able to endure. Whatever you must endure. That's why. Let's go to. Uh, Isaiah, I mean. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Real fast. I'm going to go there. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll jump over to the New Testament. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Only got a couple of scriptures. I I, I didn't, wasn't going to be very long tonight because uh, I just wanted to kind of get us to thinking about it, getting us back into the practice of praying. And next week we're going to talk about the power of prayer. That's what we're going to deal with uh, if the Lord says the same. Verse 17, very simple. And it says, constantly pray. Amen. That's what the New English Translation said. King James says it like this. Let's go there. King James says, 
pray without ceasing. That means that, that don't mean that I spend 24 hours a day praying. Because watch this. What God has implemented in the body of Christ today is different from back in biblical times when we were dealing with the Jews. The Jews prayed three times a day at certain times of the day. What God is telling us today, they were limited in their practice, but we have access where we can pray anytime. So he's telling us today that I want you to always be in prayer. Don't, don't just pray three times. Make it five, seven, eight, but be in constantly constant communication with me. That's what God is looking for from us. That's why he gave us his spirit. And the spirit is the one that makes intercession. So the spirit is letting us know what we should be saying to God. And the spirit knows what the will of God is. The spirit knows the heart of God. And so we don't have to pray in a mist, as James said, praying for things that we know that God is not uh, going to bless us with. We uh, praying about things that God is not a part of. You know, you know how we have those prayers. We ask God to condemn somebody so that we can come up, uh, fire them off the job so we can get their position, uh, uh, cause them a divorce so we can get their wife or husband. You, you, you know how they. Uh, I, I wish something happened to them so I could have what they got. No, God doesn't honor prayers like this. But God tells us to pray for those that uh, despitefully use you and persecute you. We have to be in constant prayer for one another, not just our own family. But for everybody. So it tells us to pray without ceasing. But the problem with the church is we've gotten so relaxed that now the only time we pray is when we need something. We don't, we don't pray and just talk to God to find out what his will or what his purpose is or what he would have me to do today. Because God may ask me to do something today that's different from what he had me to do yesterday. Have you ever been in a situation where you drive the same route every day to work or wherever you're going, and the day the spirit begins to tug and pull and say, go a different direction? And you find going in a different direction, something happened. Either something uh, fatally happens and God uh, causes you to miss out, or either he has you to run into somebody that either you are blessing to them or they are blessing to you. We need to hear the voice of God on a daily basis. So he says, Pray without ceasing. Amen. Amen. Why would I pray without ceasing? Because I need to be in constant communication with God. Amen. How am I going to know who God is? How am I going to learn to really truly trust God if I don't talk to him? Amen. Let's go. Let's go back. I'm sorry, y'all. I got you jumping back and forth, but I need you to do this for me just to get back in practice. Amen. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Let's go to Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 29 and 12. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because we need to be back praying. Uh, Jeremiah 29 and 12. We already know what verse 11 said. Verse 11, that's my favorite, right? Verse 4, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected. In other words, God is saying, I know where I'm going to take you to. I've already wrote it out. But verse 12 said, this is where I want you to look tonight, since we're talking about prayer. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. In other words, he's telling us, we ought to have a place that we go and talk to God. He's telling us to pray without ceasing. We should always pray and not, not faint, not give out. He's letting us know there ought to be a place that we have set aside that we go and talk to God. Amen. I will and he says, I will hearken on you. That word hearken, that word hearkens means there I will hear you. There I will listen to you. Amen. I, the hear of our concern is one definition. Amen. So he's saying, if you, if you designate a place to come and talk to me, I will hear you in that place. That's why I love Psalms 91 when it talks about uh, that we are the day that dwell in the secret place of the, Mo High, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, when we designate a place, God meets us there. Have you ever been woke up in the middle of the night and you're trying to figure out, Lord, why do you keep waking my wife? Because he's waiting for you. 
His desire is for you to come and communicate with him, commune with him. His, his desire is to have uh, some type of transaction with you. He's saying, I've been watching you. I know what your burdens are. And I'm here today to help you fulfill all your needs. Amen. That's why in Luke 1 and 37, you can go there if you like. Uh, I've, I've got maybe two more uh, scriptures I'm going to read. And then, then we're going to uh, say goodnight. Uh, <clears throat> Luke 1 37. Let's go there. Luke 1 and 37. And it says, watch this. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. But how would I know that if I don't spend time with God? If I don't spend time communicating with God, I'll never know the capabilities of God. I just told you earlier when we got started how prayer is my way of getting to know who God is. Amen. And so as I get to know God, I get to know uh, that he's a reference. Uh, he is my reference uh, in the midst of my storms, uh, in the midst of chaos. Then once I began to trust him, once I began to know who he is by talking to him and the transaction that has taken place, then I can be like Proverbs 5, uh, 5, Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5, I'm sorry, that talks about trusting in the Lord with all that heart, leaning on to their own understanding and uh, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You've got to be in contact. Matthew 6.33 tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things. What things? Things that we are already he's talk, he already talked about. Everything that you need. You ain't got to be worried about. I'm going to provide everything that you need. So he's saying, if I seek him first and all his righteousness, all these things, everything I need will be added to me. And sometimes the problem we have is we're seeking money. We're seeking material things. But God is saying, I want to give you peace. I want to give you joy. I want to restore your hope. You know, these are things that you need that even in spite of where you are in your walk for as your storm, if God gives you peace, then guess what? You can walk through a storm. If he gives you joy, you can be in the valley of the shadows of death. And yet you can still at your lowest moment, still have your joy and be happy. And say, I ain't happy with my situation, but I'm happy because I know who's here with me. And so, uh, as I get ready to close, prayer or the power of prayer opens our eyes. Because what it does is it opens our eyes to who he really is. Same way through the word. But prayer, prayer is simply talking to God, getting to know him. Finding out what he has for us. Colossians chapter 4 and verse number 2, the A part. You can write this down. Go look at it later. But it says, uh, devote yourself to prayer. In other words, King James tells us that we ought to pray, watch as well as pray. But uh, the, the New English translation, I believe it is, that says, devote yourself to prayer. In other words, just like in the morning, we have those devotional books that we get up and read. And some of us have our devotion where we get up and just we pick out a scripture to read every day. Or we go to the books of Psalms and read. It says devote yourself, meaning that you ought to be dedicated to talking to him on a daily basis. If we ever gonna, if you're ever going to make it out of what you're going through, it's going to take communication. Now, my last scripture that I want to look at, and I'm going to stop right there, is Romans. Let's go there. Romans uh, chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I said I was going to stop, but uh, I got one more, and then I'm going to stop, I promise you. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, 12 uh, verse number 12, and it says, New English translation, it tells us, well, let's back up to verse number 11. It says, do not lack in zeal. Be enthusiastic in spirit. Only way I can be enthusiastic in my spirit, uh, my spirit has to be fed something that helps me uh, be enthusiastic. And that means through the word of God, communicating with God, talking to God. God speaks to us through his word as well. It says, be not lacking zeal. Be enthusiastic in spirit. Serve the Lord. Verse 12 says, rejoice in hope. 
endure in suffering, persist in prayer. Now, I didn't get to the story. You can go back and read it. But this woman, when you go back and look at eight, Luke 18, verse 2, it, God gives the parable about this woman who was persistent to this, uh, this unjust judge. He didn't know God. But through her persistence, she kept going to him. She kept going to him. He finally blessed her with what she, what she needed. God is showing us and comparing him to this unjust judge. And he's saying, uh, you don't have to uh, go through what she went through. He's saying that I won't treat you like, she, like this unjust judge by you coming to me. But God is also telling us, but even in your persistence, you've got to be patient. Because God may not answer you. He may not give you what you've been seeking him for on your first time. But you've got to believe that God will answer because he will. Amen. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. That's what we're going to close out tonight at. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 is where we're going to close out at uh, in verse 14. Everybody knows this but I want to uh, suggest here tonight. And I'm reading from New English, Translate, New English Translation. And it says, If my people who belong to me, King James said, who are called by my name. If I'm called by your name, that means I belong to him. If my people who belong to me, watch this, humble themselves, that's the first thing. Pray is the second thing, he says. Seek to please me. In other words, seek my face. That's the dedication. That's the commitment. That's the praying without ceasing. That's the Finding a place where God is and, and, and getting in communication with him, communing with him, he says, to please me and re repudicate their sinful practice. In other words, repent, turn from them. He says, watch this, then I will respond from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. We need our land healed today. And the, the only way I know to get our land healed is the church, the body of Christ. We, the church, have to be in prayer. The Bible tells us that if any two shall touch and agree on anything here on earth, that the Lord God, he will hear us and he will do it. And so tonight I'm asking us, I'm pleading with the body of Christ, anybody that's listening that will see this video, we need to get back to prayer. That is my plea for us to be praying. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, tune in Sunday morning. Amen. Nine o'clock. Uh, those that can, press your weight. I'd love to see your face. We are doing our social distance. We are uh, committed to safety and keeping you safe. But I would love to see your face in the place. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll close our Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you, God, that we understand that our best communicative tool with you is through uh, prayer. God, and I pray that you would rebirth some things in all of us, that we would be committed to uh, knowing who you are better or on a higher standard than what we know, that we would come to trust you more. We would come to rely on you and love you more than what we do. Uh, God, I pray right now, Lord, that uh, prayer would be something that we would implement back in our life, it would become uh, the very important thing that we have in our life, that we communicate with you, that we talk to you on a daily basis before we make any decision. God, we love you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And we say, God bless you. Thank you. We love you. And Father, until we all meet again, it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you and there's nothing you can do about it.